Right, so we're going to be looking at conditional probability for our next um, statistics uh, topic, which I do like. This is much more, much more my type of thing. I like the idea that we can try and work out how likely something is to happen. Don't confuse it with actually working out what is going to happen because we just don't know, do we? But we can work out at least what's more likely to happen. And that is a useful thing to know. And we're going to be looking at conditional probability which is going to get interesting because we've had mutually exclusive and we've had independent events but quite often that there's a bit of an area in between where two things can both happen um, and they almost seem to be independent of each other but they're not totally independent of each other and how do we measure that things like that we're going to be looking at also set notation so you may want to um, note down what's about to come up on the screen in a moment because it's your basics of set notation that we're going to be going through today with of course a garibaldi with my, with my coffee i mean in these in these days of um being quarantined it's not easy to find a biscuit so we're down to garibaldi just about the only thing in the house but um i've never minded Right, and now you're going to have question one of the first exercise actually come up, and I want you to note down all of the Venn diagrams that you see and see if you can put those into set notation. Pause the video for a little bit, and then I'm going to go through them on a whiteboard, okay? Right, so the first one, it's stuff that's in A, isn't it? But it's also not stuff that's in B. So when we're going for that, and it's also, it's, it's not adding more, it's taking stuff away. Whenever it's taking stuff away, that means we're getting more guarded. So we're going to be using uh, one of those as opposed to a union. So it's A, intersection, not B. Now, all this other stuff's not B, but that's not in A as well. So that's why it's an intersection. That's the first one. Right, next up, we want everything that isn't what we've just had. It's actually the opposite of what we just had, isn't it? But it's also got everything. One way we could talk about it is, it is, is everything that's in B. And on top of that, we've got this stuff here isn't a as well so you could call it you could call it that there, there are other ways you can get into it you could say hey hang on this is the opposite of that so because it's the opposite of that you could say that it's not that couldn't you but you always want to go for the simplest thing that you can so it's everything that's in b and it's everything that's not in a and I know this bit isn't in A, but that's all right, because that's additional stuff being added to it. Whenever you've got the U, the union, that's more stuff that you've got added to it. Now, this one causes some, some real confusion. There's definitely more than one way to do this. The way I came up, slightly different to what's in the book. So we've definitely got two distinct zones, though, haven't we? So let's try and nail each one independently. First up, I've got that little bit in the middle. That is a intersection b isn't it so i'm going to want that but i'm also going to want everything that isn't in a or b so i'm also having so that's a union i'm also having everything that's in a union b or not in a union b everything that's not in a union b because that would be all of that would be that wouldn't it so that's what i came up with what they reckon in the back of the book is they keep they keep that bit there but they so you can change another way of saying that would be not a intersection not b so you're thinking this is for all this stuff around the outside everything that's not in a intersection with everything that's not in b means that you end up leaving those bits alone don't you but i think that's not as neat as that one so i prefer 
that one but whatever makes sense for you now you may need to pause this go back and watch it one or two more times because it does get confusing no doubt about it this is a nice simple zone it's own it's got to be an a and it's got to be in b and it's got to be c so it's full-on double intersection and that's all that one is hopefully that one doesn't cause too many problems and again this one we've got everything that's in a and everything that's in b and everything that's in c so this is a classic a union b union c nothing tricky there but what happens if we want everything that's in a and b but not including C. Well, often I think that's the best way to start. Start by talking about what you've got. I've got everything that's in A and B. So that's A union B. But not including the bit that's C. Well, that's going to be an intersection. So as well as being everything in A and B, it's got to be, a, it's got to be in A and B, but it's also got to not be in C so it's intersecting with not being in C so that gives us that one there and I should put a little bracket around there really to show that that's one situation coming in with that one hopefully that helps okay next up you're going to need to work out these probabilities here what's it got anything to do with well to do with a pack of cards and the A is an ace and a d is a diamond so it's a normal pack of playing cards so that means we've got 52 cards 13 diamonds four aces I'd like you to have a go at drawing a Venn diagram for all these cards. So remembering that uh, the four aces are a heart, a spade, a club, and somewhere in here should be the ace of diamonds. There it is. Right, so have a go at doing that. Pause it and then see if you agree what I've got for the probabilities of all these things going on up here. One loop for aces, one loop for diamonds. There was only one ace of diamonds. There were 13 diamonds altogether, so there'll be 12 in here. There were four aces altogether, so there were three there for the ones that aren't diamonds. And then there are another 39 cards. No, there aren't. There are 39 including those there, aren't there? So what have we got there? 12, 13, so that's 16, so 52 takes 16 would be another 36 cards left over there. Right, now let's start working out our different probabilities. So A is a probability that it's A intersection diamond, so both an ace and a diamond so we are looking at just that one card of an ace of diamonds so the probability is going to be one out of 52 second scenario a union d means it could be an ace it could be a diamond it could be an ace and a diamond all of those things we're going to be happy with so it's going to be 3 plus 1 plus 12 all out of 52 which is what 16 out of 52 you don't need to um simplify unless you're asked to so let's not worry about that um part c probability ace dash that means not an ace 
So probability not an ace, where you've got four aces, meaning you've got 48 left over that aren't aces. So that'd be 48 out of 52. And the last one, probability not an ace, intersection uh, with a diamond. So it's not an ace, but it is a diamond. So that is going to be those ones there, isn't it? So that is going to be 12 out of 52. Right, so our second and final example today starts here. Given that the probability of A, whatever it is, is 0 0.3, probability of B is 0 0.4, and the probability of A intersection B is 0 0.25, Explain why events A and B are not independent. Hold on. Is there any calculation you can think of? Well, if they were independent, then you could do a calculation for how they would both happen at the same time. If you rolled two dice, and the, the probability is one sixth for each of them. The probability of a double six is one sixth times one sixth, isn't it? Which is one over 36. So if they were independent, the probability of A intersection B would equal 0 0.3, which is the probability of A, times the probability of B, which is 0 0.4. And if you times them together, you only get 0 0.12. So actually, it's more likely that they both happen at the same time than it would be if they were truly independent. So they must affect each other a bit. So that would be your answer on that. Now, what happens if we throw a third event into the mix, which is mutually exclusive of one of the others? That means it can't happen at the same time. Right, so we've got this third event, probability um, event C. The probability of event C happening is 0 0.2. And we're being told that A and C are mutually exclusive. That means they can't happen at the same time. But B and C are independent. Now, your next challenge is to draw a Venn diagram that sums all of this up. So pause the video and have a go. Now, because they're mutually exclusive, the first thing I'm going to do is put A on one side and C on another. And then B can happen at the same time as A. And it can, it's independent to C, so it can happen with that as well. Now, what we need to do is then start trying to fill in some of this. Now, the fact that B and C are independent means the probability of B and C is going to be then both happening at the same time is what is the probability of B it's 0.4 probability of C is 0.2 so multiply those together get 0.08 that means I can put 0.08 not there I can put 0.08 in between for the thing when they both happen together so I can sneak that in there now I also know that everything else is the other possibilities for C so if I do 0 0.2 take 0 0.08 that gives me 0 0.12 so that will have to be C there uh, we know that B and A together is 0 0.25 and I also know that all of the B's adding up together have got to make 0 0.4. So 0 0.25 plus 0 0.8 is 0 0.33. Take that away from 0 0.4. This must be 0 0.07. We also know that A can't happen with C. So, And the chance of 
a happening with 0 0.3, take 0 0.25 away, and that leaves me with 0 0.05 there. And the final thing to fill in is, what's the chance of none of these things happening at all? Well, if we add all of these things up, we don't actually come to too many. We add them all up. I think you'll find we get to 0 0.57. So the chance of this happening there will be everything minus that 0 0.57 is 0 0.43. So 0 0.43 would go in there. Right, final problem on here. Find the probability that we've got right at the bottom down here of A intersection B dash union C. So what are we thinking? We're thinking... It's got to include anything in C. That's the first thing we can say. So that is 0 0.08 plus 0 0.12, or just the probability of C, which is what we were told before, which is 0 0.2. And it's also, that's unioning with A intersection, not B. So it's got to be an A and not B. So that's actually that bit there. So we are going to be adding that to the 0 0.2 to get 0 0.25. And that is our final answer on that. So what are we going to do next? Well, you're going to do some practice. Page 19 of the textbook, exercise 2A. And questions four, just for a little bit of practice at finding those um, set things going on. And then into some exam style stuff of 9, 10, 11 and 12. And let me know if you have any trouble with those. The uh, questions and answers will be uh, just posted up here as well. Okay. Cheerio.